we've had a unique experiences weather-wise and so on. Uh, we had a windstorm, a wind burst come down, and uh, I think it was around 1978, 79, where we actually had to empty the avenue coming down Central Avenue, take a break for about 20 minutes, and then we came back on. Hold uh, on to your kilts with that. Oh. <laughs> It, if you have to run into the saloon and grab a burger, it's not the worst thing in the world, right? Well, yeah, but it was, if there's about uh, 5,000 people trying to get in there, it is. <laughs> so we hear about all the scams and, and what to do and what not to do, and you just mentioned family members and caretakers. Why is it we never hear or we hear very little about prosecution of these people? Why can't you name names and tell us who's done what to the grandmother? This is a, a very complicated issue because you have family dynamics a lot of times, and yeah. a mom and dad don't want to turn in their, their child um, or their caregiver, who is the person who's responsible for all their daily needs. Um, this is the person who's their lifeline to doctor appointments um, and getting things taken care of. Uh, so they, they really are very reluctant to, to bring charges against somebody that is this person in their life. There's sometimes intimidation involved. Um, it, it could be direct or, or you know, inferred, um, but it's, that's the biggest problem. And also the, the elderly person doesn't want to admit, oh, I was taken. Um, right. So that's that's another big problem. Um, but there are, there is units of you know the attorney general's office dedicated to this problem, and um, it's it's something they are very strongly um, trying to enforce. It's it's difficult though. Back in the seventies, uh, there was uh, cl a clear preference for one parent over the other, and what happened in a number of states, New York included, is that uh, they formally did away with the presumption based on the sex of a parent. And so I, on paper, there was the idea that, that all parents are equal. But what judges do in practice, which is very common, is they, they do the every other weekend for one parent, either the mother or the father, and a couple weeks during the summertime. And then the children live with the other parent. And, and there's two important problems with that. One problem is the research shows that children do best when they have the ability to spend equal amounts of time with both of their parents. But the more immediate and pressing problem is when you have a system like that, it basically sets up to the parents where one is a, is a winner and one is a loser. The children live with one parent and they spend a substantially less time with the other parent. And unfortunately, for anyone who's, who's practiced in the family law area and to anybody who's been a participant as a, as a as a party or as a child knows that oftentimes when families go into court, it's, it's not the best time, emotional hostilities are at their height, parents are very upset. And sometimes you know, all of that gets wrapped up into these, these long and protracted litigation battles where someone is a winner and someone is a loser with the children. So what the research has shown is that in states that have passed this law, what it essentially does is it removes that perverse incentive for families to spend a lot of money and a lot of time fighting over who gets to be that winner and who gets to be that loser. And at the end, people walk into court already knowing that at the end of the day when they walk out, they're probably going to have the children half of the time. And so it removes that, that added aspect of contention and litigation that, that unfortunately causes families a lot of money and harms children in the long run.